I'm going to show everybody two examples of GAEs that I've performed. And one is going to be more of the conventional type of GAE that we sort of talked about earlier, which in terms of if you want to start, maybe you want to start with doing, you know, microspheres. So this patient had lateral compartment pain, and this is the initial angiogram. And you can see here kind of hiding out there is a BB marker that's at the site of the patient's pain. So this patient, as we sort of mentioned, has lateral compartment pain, particularly sort of in the lateral superior aspect of the joints. But with that said, we want to target every artery on that side. So the first artery that we chose to select was the inferior lateral. And this brings up another important point. If you look at this angiogram, you may look at these arteries and say, oh, there's not a ton of blush arising from these arteries, but this patient has pain in this site. So we're going to integrate every genicular that we can that feeds this compartment. And this is why, because even though it didn't seem like there was a lot of blush, selective catheterization will show a lot more. And so you can see here, this is the neovascularity or neoangiogenesis that we are looking for. And again, it's a little bit away from the site of the patient's pain, but it does sort of correlate to the side. So we will proceed with embolization. So this is the the blush that we're talking about. And so we're going to embolize this branch. In this case, we chose to do about 0.5 cc's of 200 micron hydropearl. So we didn't really talk about the exact sizes that we use, but in general, most people are using greater than 100 micron spheres. And generally, I think that one to 300 micron range is the sweet spot. So I use 200. And again, you can see here the blush has been resolved but we still have maintained flow within that parent genicular artery. So you can see that the, there's still flow in the normal genicular, but that neovascularity has been resolved. Then we'll proceed to select the other artery that sort of correlates to the site of the patient's pain. This is the superior lateral genicular artery. And so again, we will catheterize that with the microcatheter. And you can see here, this correlates even nicer with the site of the patient's very focal pain. And again, you can see here that that's the blush that we're talking about. And we'll proceed with embolization of that branch. You can see here, again, a very small amount of embolic. This is like 0 0.4, 0 0.5 cc's. You can see here, there's still flow within the parent artery and that neovascularity or that blush has been resolved. One question that does come up with sort of trainees or people who are new to this procedure, they say, you know, where do you want to put your microcatheter? How distal do you want to be? For me personally, I've kind of taken this Goldilocks approach. I used to embolize very distally. I've also tried very proximally. Obviously, if you do very approximately, you worry about reflux and things like that. And, and I think if you get too distal, sometimes more often than not, you may get spasm. You may miss some important branches that might come off more proximal. So I sort of go in the middle of the vessel. And I found that this neovascularity is kind of like a tumor. It is sort of hypervascular. So it will sort of preferentially take up the embolic if you sort of inject it slow enough. So that's just my sort of take on it. A second example, this is a patient who has more diffuse pain. And so when I see a patient that has more diffuse pain, I will sort of make more efforts to embolize as many vessels as possible. But this patient was a more recent patient. And so this is when I have sort of started to adopt using lipiodol emulsion to treat my patients. So you can see here, this is the initial angiogram. You can see this patient has really, you know, essentially multifocal blush, kind of blush all around, all over the knee. We still did put a BB marker over one area that the patient sort of said that had the most pain. And that actually correlates very nicely to the superior medial aspect of the joint. So we selected the superior medial genicular artery. You can see there's three BBs here correlating to the site of the patient's pain. She has pretty impressive blush there. And this is what the emulsion, lipidol emulsion looks like. It looks just like, you know, contrast essentially, but it, just like a denser version. And for people who are old enough to sort of have lived the sea taste days, and some of you might still be living those days, you're much more familiar with lipiodol in terms of how that looks and sort of how that comes out. But for people who haven't seen much of this, you can see here, it's very dense, sort of looks like contrast and forms like this cast that will really resolve pretty quickly over time. And again, this is roughly about 0.5 cc's. And the difference here is I take this to stasis because this is going to resolve almost by the time I select the other arteries of the knee. So you can see here, this is the superior medial genicular and this is the descending. So even though we got one artery that feeds this part of the joint, we still want to integrate every artery. And this is why you can see there's really an impressive blush here, despite the fact that we just embolized the superior medial. And you can see here, even the lipiodol has already sort of pretty much washed out in the other branch. You don't see the cast anymore. So we'll proceed with lipiodol emulsion injection here. Again, we take this to stasis about 0.5 cc's. And again, you can see that that's the sort of cast that we're trying to form.
So once we're done with that, we'll proceed with selecting the other areas of the knee that the patient still sort of reported diffuse pain. So we want to check all the abnormal vessels. This is the superior lateral genicular. You can see there's pretty impressive blush here and it's away from the site of the focal pain, but there's a lot of non-target vessels. In it. And again, this is one of the sort of, for me, one of the appeals to using a temporary embolic is I don't have to worry as much about non-target embolization when I do that. And this is it, actually how the lipidol comes out. So these are some flora stores showing that one of the folks with me when we were doing this called this like marching ants. That's sort of what it looks like. You can see it really kind of a pretty picture as it sort of marches out. And you can see here on the top right of the screen, you can still see some residual lipidol from the superior medial genicular artery embolization that we had performed. And again, this is just about 0.5 cc's. And what's really interesting is as you continue to inject, you can see these sort of flow dynamics in real time. And you can actually see the anastomotic communications between the geniculars as you're doing this. And so if you look here, if you pay close attention, you can actually see here that there's communication with the inferior lateral genicular artery. If you look at sort of along the joint line, you can see there's sort of some lipidol sort of marching across the joint line, and that's communicating with the inferior lateral. So here are some sort of spot images showing that better. So there's the communication with the inferior lateral. And as we continue to inject, actually, we could actually see it start communicating with the inferior medial. So one of the things I like about the lipidol emulsion is that you can actually watch all this in real time and kind of see how these are, arteries are all sort of interconnected. Whereas if you're just giving particles mixed with contrast, this is probably happening in the background, but you're not able to probably see this in real time. And then we'll proceed to select the inferior lateral genicular artery. This is the last artery that we selected. And again, you can see here, this has communications with the superior lateral. And so it's, it's giving us kind of like a two for one special here. And you can see this pretty intense blush. And again, as we inject the lipidol emulsion, we're getting really nice cast of sort of both territories there. And we, again, we'll take this to stasis here. And this was about 0.4 cc. So again, overall, roughly two cc's that we're using a little bit less than two cc's and getting a whole joint coverage. The contrast that's like layering in the joint, is that in the synovium? This right here? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny, you know, I was making this presentation. I thought that was lipidol too. That's actually, I took some spot images. That's actually just the, the cortex of the bone. Ah, interesting. It's okay. just like really sharply marginated bone or whatever. Yeah, because I noticed yeah. on one of the other ones too, I was like, wow, is it layering in the synovium? Yeah, I was looking at that really closely last night actually, but no, that's it. That's just the bone. That's it's not wild, lipidol. Right? I, I wish it was, but it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's just the, you see how it kind of looks like bone yeah. there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Great images, though. Fantastic. Oh, man. thank, thank you, you so for much. sharing. Um, and just a great example of the lapia joint. I think you're right. Like putting something in there that's temporary allows you to like kind of like go to stasis. Also visualize where your embolization is going. Right. Going right. Exactly. That's key. I mean, that's key. I think it's very important, right? And I think just knowing that it's going to wash away literally by the time you select the other vessel. And again, we have data to sort of suggest that that's enough to get the effect that we want. That makes me feel much more comfortable, you know, sort of pushing the limits of how much we're embolizing. Yeah. So are we seeing more docs doing that in the U.S.? I know, you know, Mark's been doing it in France, but are we seeing it catch on, you know, even around the world? I think it's slowly starting to catch on or people are, you know, I think most people, this is not why I post it on Twitter. I just post it because I like to post interesting stuff, but people are reaching out and saying, oh, that's really cool. Like, why are you doing that? You know, people don't know the data as much, obviously. And so just sharing the, the study with them, people are very intrigued and interested by it. But I'm trying to work with Gerbay to hopefully try to do some U.S.-based studies to hopefully help validate, you know, the important work that Mark has done and try to get it hopefully like an on-label indication for that here as well would be would be awesome because I do think there's a lot of advantages to it. 